Welcome to the Picking Nerds, and it's time for Budget Bombs! Powerful commander cards for under a dollar. I'm your host, Joe Cherries. I'm your host, BZ, and that makes us the Nitpicking Nerds, bringing you videos every single day for Commander. And it's only possible because of the people who are scrolling on screen right now, our patrons. Yes, and one of our patrons is the patron of the day, and that is Alice Ebaugh. Sorry if I'm pronouncing your last name wrong. I'm terrible with pronunciation. He's also terrible. Oh. I thought you were going to make it, like, I thought there was something more clever. It wasn't coming. No. Uh, okay. We're going to be in Command Confessed Philly this upcoming weekend, so come meet us. We're special guests. It's going to be super fun. And we're also going to be in Conf Command Fest Montreal in July, July 15th to the 17th. We'll be there all three days, special guests. And you can buy your pass using our affiliate link. What? And if you buy your pass using our affiliate link, you're supporting this channel. You've got to be thinking, how many affiliate links these people have? We just got another one. So if you're going to go to Command Fest Montreal, I would say you have to use our affiliate link to buy all of your tickets and badges and entries and all that stuff because we're going to get some kickback on it. It's really going to help us. We're trying to pay for the travel for that event. We would appreciate it a ton. Uh, Moxfield.com is a sponsor of this entire channel. So... If you need a deck building website, they're the one to go. And the question is really, are they going to be able to see the ad coming? No. If you need a deck building website, go to Moxville. If you need to predict where the ads are, go to some other channel because you can't do it here. Yeah, because you're never going to get it right. And happy birthday to every single person whose birthday is today. Happy birthday to your pets. All of them. Every single one of them. What's we doing today? Busy. It's budget bombs, which means we got powerful commander cards for under a dollar. Almost always, we're recycling new ones. We're not going to repeat too often unless it's been like two years and there's different contexts and stuff. But we just got a couple cards of every color. They're amazing in budget decks. Some of them translate into regular commander. Yeah. All right. So we're just going to hop right into it. The first one is Austere Command, which is six mana board wipe. You know, you get to it's modal. You get to choose two or four. That's actually one of the original command cycles. I don't know how. Yep, it is Look. the original command cycle. <laughs> One of the original, I believe it is the original command cycle. Uh, you pick two of four. You get, uh, what is it, big creatures, small creatures, artifacts, enchantments, and you put them together. Uh, and it's only recently gone down under a dollar. A lot of cards on this list are new to budget bombs. They never qualified because they never were under a dollar until now. Is that true? Well, this one might have been under a dollar for a little bit when Commander Legends came out. It probably went back over and maybe back down. Yeah, maybe. I think it's it's... Just recently come back down. We've never done it on budget bombs before. I think farewell is something that uh, is keeping is started to push us down a little bit more. That's good because this card's amazing and budget players get to play it. Yes, it's very good for budget decks. What's next? Oh, we got loyal warhound. It's two mana, three one with vigilance. But if you're behind on lands to anyone, you get a planes tapped. It's slightly worse night of the white orchid because it comes in tapped and not untapped and it has to be a basic. But who we're not? It's kind of like splitting hairs at some point because. If you're behind on lands, turn three or four, this is just better rampant growth. Yeah. Does your white deck care about creatures? There's a high percent chance it does, and this is a great way to ramp using creatures. So this is like, if you need your second Night of the Water, could you put Night of the Water in first? Obviously, the card is better distinctively. But then, if you need a second one, you go, oh, okay, well, for 20 cents, I'll put in the Loyal Warhound. Yeah, literally 20 cents. It might be two cents cheaper than Night of the White Orchid. Is it? Yeah, they're both they're both really cheap. It's literally just a second copy of the same card when you need to really just tie up. The, it's, it's usually like the eighth or ninth little uh, ramp ramp that you put. And like it's just a nice little bow. Yeah, this next one, I think in the lower speed, you know, like slower, lower power budget games, this thing's going to be super annoying and it's never going to die unless there's a board wipe. It's Suture Priest at 93 cents, just under a dollar. Your things enter, gain one life. Their things enter, they lose one life. Yeah, Sushi Priest is a great card. Uh, it's great for life gain decks, and it's just great for an attrition strategy where you plan on taking your opponents down slowly over the game, like just little ticks over and over and over again. Kind of like a burn deck, but evil burn, right? We had it in our Commander <laughs> Cube, which is lower power, and we had to take it out because it was so annoying. It was uh, it was game controlling. It, yeah. it, just, it was just very, very good. It demanded an answer, even though it was only a two drop. Right, that's a lower power cube, but still. How about blue cards? Uh, for blue cards, we start with Dig Through Time. I know we've talked about this being a budget bomb in the past. Uh, I would be shocked if we didn't. Like, I, As far as I know, this is the lowest it's ever been, and I didn't see it on our past ones. Okay. I oh, I would assume this is an OG budget bomb because I think it's been so low forever. I think we talked about it on cards most worth buying, but when we did that, it was $1.25. Yeah. All right. Well, Dig Through Time is definitely a budget bomb. $0.42 cents and one of the best draw spells in the entire format, especially for card selection. Ooh, seven cards, and you get the best two? Look and at a hand. can only cost two mana? Look at an open 
opening hand size, pick the two best cards for your hand. Okay, I'll take that all day. It's a very good card. Uh, in mill decks, stormy decks, decks with fetches or fetch equivalents of all the wilds, whatever, this is going to be fantastic. I mean, if it costs four or less, you're kind of feeling great. Yeah, it, getting it uh, the cost down in your graveyard is super easy. I mean, if four or less is medium. You really, you really want to get those juicy one. I feel pretty good about it. It's yeah, it's, it's drawn in dreams, right? Yeah, in a budget deck, it's better draw drawn from dreams. Whatever. That's that what I just said. No, you didn't. You said it is. I said it's better. Oh, I thought. No. Next blue card. Uh, it's ghostly pilfer. Weird. This is literally this first thing. The thing that actually makes this card playable. It's a two one with some medium tax where if you, you attack, you can discard it when it untaps. You can pay two and draw, which is key to the city, right? It's weird. Yeah, you could just discard a card. Colon. So you can discard multiple cards if it matters. It's make it weird, unblockable. It's it's a weird card. It really, really is. But the thing that like randomly makes this thing playable is this little dinky spirit, so it's an evasive threat. But whenever they cast a card not from their hand, you draw a card. Uh, how about commanders? That happens all the time. This thing just kind of sits there, and nobody really wants It's not that good. People don't want to kill it, but then it just rides the line and ends up slowly ac acquiring way too much value. Yeah, it, it's it's tiny incremental value all the time that makes this card just good. It's so weird because it looks terrible. It really does not look good, but it plays out pretty sweet, especially if you're trying to discard, then it's just through the roof. Speaking of roof... Wow. Wow. Nice segue. It is Rooftop Storm for 76 cents. Zombie decks, obviously, 100%. If you're in a zombie deck, this is one of the best cards Ever. I mean, it's tough to beat it. Even the worst rooftop storms put all of your zombies from your hand into play. And then there's always cards you can play with cards from your graveyard. This card is so silly. It doesn't say from your hand. It doesn't say your zombie. Oh, oh my God. It's so good. It has some wombo combos with like Gravecrawler and Liliana, Untouched by Death or whatever that one is. Yep. You cast zombies from your graveyard. And only recently has it gone under a dollar. It was in the pre con and it just got printed in the dirt. And now the hype's died down, so this card is the most affordable it's really ever been. So if you have a zombie deck, you just need this card. I mean, I would. I mean, how do you not play? It'd be, it's shocking, like how easy it is to win. If you play Rooftop Storm, you're going to be the front runner for a while. Oh yeah, for sure. On the black cards, we got Zulaport Cutthroat, a card we always talk about, but we never like put in the budget bombs. So it's in the budget bombs. It's thirty-two cents, and it's one in a black for a one-one. When your stuff, when your stuff dies, each opponent loses one, and you gain one. Super solid aristocrat. It's like it's up there with Blood Artist. I think it's a little worse, but Blood Artist is like four bucks. So this is like the best one you can play for if you're trying to build a budget bomb deck. It's he's at least running mates with you know. Uh, it's on par I with mean, Blood Artist. He's he like if you know maybe Blood Artist the sheriff, but he's the deputy. Okay, they're, they're in the same deck a lot of the times. They're yeah exactly. You know, it's very it's going to be a rare situation that you go. I'm definitely putting in Blood Artist, but I'm definitely not putting in Zulu Park Cutthroat. That's a strange. I mean, it exists, but it's be, it's rare because like I said, they're running mates. This is why we we always talk about um, every deck needs like a backup plan, non combat wing condition. This is that for the sacrifice deck. We just can just spin our wheels. We don't have to even worry about the combat step. Eventually, our opponents are going to get drained out. If we can create loops or combos, then they're just dead immediately. Yeah, and also uh, with Zulipar Cutthroat, like, just it pads your life total. Super nice to just get that padded life total. It's a four-point life swing every time. Yes. Yeah, I, I got confused for one second, but yeah, you gain one, they lose three. That's four, That's four actually. Next is Puppeteer Click. We have a five-mana 3-2 flyer with Persist, and when it dies, it comes back, and the thing it does when it enters is it seals something from an opposing graveyard, and you just get it with haste, and then at the end step, it gets exiled. But if you sacrifice it, kind of just goes back. And then if you can put counters on click or recur, recur click, reanimate click, you're just spamming your opponent's creatures and there's not much they can do about it. This is such a weird card. I, I never know where to play it, but I absolutely love its design. And for 22 cents, it's definitely going to go in some sort of play my opponent's stuff deck, maybe a sacrifice. You definitely want to be sacrificing because if you let the thing go back to the graveyard, you can't get it back then. If you got things like, you know, Sack Alice, Visser Seer, Yogg Moth, and you're throwing Machaeus in your deck, this thing can infinite combo with McKay's. You steal all their stuff over and over, and if they have any ETB worth anything, you just win on the spot. Yeah, I mean, McKay's, yeah. What does he go count? He goes infinite with, I believe, a ham sandwich. A, a ham sandwich, yes. Yeah, it literally doesn't take anything. A puppeteer click can be the ham sandwich you need. It can be your sandwich. Next, we got a spicy one. Oubliette. 83 cents, one black black for an enchantment. Enters the battlefield. Something your opponent controls, one of those creatures, phases out. So it's just gone. It's not there. They have to answer Oubliette in order to get it back. This is kind of looks like an Oblivion Ring effect, but it's not because those those effects I think are terrible. And this one I think becomes totally passable because we can just lock their 
uh, commander in the Phantom Zone and they'll never be able to get back. Yeah, and a lot of decks just can't answer a card like Oubliette. Like, there's the blue, black, red decks have very few answers. All the Grixis decks you're going to see might have two, maybe three answers at most to unlock this thing once it's locked away. And that's really, it sucks. It sucks when that happens because your commander, you're just stuck not doing your game plan and it feels so poopy. Budget decks, every de budget deck I build is going to have ways to like lock commanders into play. That's how you're going to be able to keep up with decks that cost more than yours. Beasy, what's next? Well, it's a card not many people have heard of, and I'm going to tell you right now, it's Moxfield.com. I got it's so good. It's the best way to build a deck online if you want to build a deck. You are at a disadvantage if you don't use Moxfield because it's honestly might be too efficient. I might be, it's too streamlined. It's just too good. Keep going, keep going. You can sort your cards, tag your cards, price your cards. It's all just, it's like a hub for everything you ever want to do, whereas you might have five or six tabs open if you're trying to build a deck on somewhere else. I've done this. I just feel like it saves me so much time. I actually uh, set up the commander cube that we have. It's like a lot of moving parts and stuff, but because of tags and organization and stuff, I can just look at it all and have it completely the way I want it. And when I'm trying to change cards, it's super easy to do. Forgive me, Moxfield. I'm sick. I can't do the ad. Joe's too sick because <laughs> Moxfield gave him Moxfield fever. Red cards. We got Loyal Apprentice, two mana, two, one with haste. Beginning of combat. If you have your commander, you get a one, one Thopter artifact creature with haste and flying. And it's only 33 cents. This thing is strange because it gives a lot of bodies for two mana. Like, when I think two mana card, how many bodies do I get? It's two, right? Or maximum one. Yeah. For the maximum amount of time. Mostly one, but it's like, if I want if I want the max bodies I can get for two mana, it's two. Yep. This thing's just like, no. What if I had a stream that just kept going? And if you play me, if you have an early commander and you play me in like turn three, I can just go whoop. And just make one every single turn. It's so weird. Yeah, to be safe, just play your commander first. You want to do it anyway. Then play Loyal Apprentice and start pooping out Thopters. It's weird that when you want bodies, this card is just better than Bear Blossom, which I think is kind of bad. Yeah, I mean, getting the one right away. I mean, you're, you're getting up two right two away. Every turn that Bitter Blossom would be uh, giving you tokens, you're up two bodies with this thing. Yeah, and Bitter Blossom obviously doesn't ever close that gap, but this doesn't happen. Right. <laughs> And something we haven't mentioned yet, it makes artifacts. So this has extra synergy for any deck that wants artifact center with a reckless fire weaver. Maybe it has a marionette master. Just add it on top. Obviously, this is your red black stack deck. The deck that Wizards has been trying to get you to play since 2002 with the release of Rakdos. Yes, they really they really have been, but we're not we're not biting. We're gonna play it in our artifact deck. Uh, we got Inferno Titan up next. Big fat beefy boys. 49 cents. Six minutes, six, six. Can fire breathe, but when it enters or attacks, you're dealing three damage divided to any targets. This thing is sweet. It's a little slow for like powered up, you know, high power commander, but I think for budget, it's like right where you want to be. Inferno Titan is a price that <clears throat> Inferno Titan's the price that Grave Titan wishes it was, so it could see some play because it's awful in commander. Yeah, yeah, Grave Titan <laughs> might be a budget bomb card, but it's nowhere close. It, no, yeah, it would be a budget bomb, like 100%. Like I mean, price-wise, it's nowhere close. Yeah, price-wise, it's nowhere close. It's like $10. Inferno Titan, they keep printing it into the ground. It's just a solid Titan. I mean, when you need over-the-top threats for your uh, your red decks that are under a dollar, it's not that hard to come by a few, but you need to make sure you, if you want like three or four, it's like Inferno Titan makes the list real, real quick. Plus, as you're attacking for a bunch of damage, you're clearing the way and you're removing threats. Not a lot of cards can do that. They're usually beater or removals. So this thing... Kind of slices and dices, and I really want to give it haste. Yeah, I mean, it gets rid of anything with three or less toughness, right? If that, that is a threat to you, or yeah. a bunch of one drops. It just depends on what's a threat on the board to you. Geode Rager is going to be a threat to you if you're my opponent, because it's going to goad every creature target player controls when you have landfall, and it's a six mana thing with first strike, and it's 93 cents, so it's like just in the budget bombs territory. In lower power games, this thing is kind of annoying, like, like frustrating to play against. Okay, so think about this. Uh, Direct Discorum is the, considered a pretty good commander card. Disrupt Decorum. Oh, yeah, Disrupt Decorum. And it's even it's even considered good, you know, playable. What if you could get Disrupt Decorum for a land drop every turn? And it enters. It's not like whenever you play a land. So if you play a fetch land, boom. And then you can, like, wait to see which one of your opponents are going to make a bigger board and then go to all their stuff at the beginning of combat. Yeah, so a fetch land is two players. You just get to go the two best players for every single fetch land. And you're probably just gonna like I know we're on a budget, so your terramorphic expanse. I'll play your, him, yeah. Your mirror lands. You can get you can get a disrupt the core. I'm like actually, if you uh, crack a mirror landscape and play your land for turn. Yeah, I mean you also um, get the new fetch lands from Capetta. Like those are even better than those. Yep. If you're in three colors, you just jam them. Yeah, I mean something about those is if you're in any two color combination, you can actually just 
you can just play them too and get two of them. It's kind of it's weird because you wouldn't think so, but you just actually can. Yeah, in one v one, you might not want to go their stuff, but you have all the information. So just set up your board, leave blockers back. This thing is first strike, and then psh, send everything into you and just eat it. But there's an advantage here, BZ, because luckily for us, Commander, a four player format that doesn't end up in that does end up in heads up, but that's not a majority of the game. I'm not really worried about heads up. Because I think I'll be able to, to win the game. That's not, yeah, that's not what we're planning for. Moving on to green cards, we got Teamer, Sabertooth, Combo, Menace, one of the best cats in Commander. It's two green green for a 4-3. One and a green. Bounce another creature you control. This thing gains indestructible. That's 86 cents. This, this thing will protect your whole board sort of by itself, and it protects itself. Yeah, uh, Team Race Saber is a really strange card, and it doesn't seem like it has any combos. Like, you look at it, it's like, oh, it's fine. It, it, it's kind of weak, right? It doesn't really do anything. But it's like bouncing and protecting your creatures at will and this thing having getting indestructible from that makes it so both this is so hard to remove and all your creatures, whatever ETBs you want again, just do them over and over again. It's just so annoying. It doesn't go away. It's extra good in like elf ball decks because we're trying to, if you want to combo with this thing, it's not that hard. Mana dorks plus haste. If you can tap a creature for three mana, circle of dream druid comes to mind, then you just have infinite mana. We talk about budget crater hoof and raise foreigners quite a bit, but here's a second budget crater hoof if you're looking for it. Thunderfoot Bayloth, six mana five five with trample and lieutenant. All your creatures get plus two plus two and trample static ability as long as you control your commander. It's fifty eight cents. This is not bad. Yeah, it's got lieutenant. Uh, you know that old school ability. Actually, this is the second card on this list with lieutenant. Weird. You know it. That's such a it's such a weird ability that we don't talk about ever, but. Here we are with all our lieutenant cards, our favorite, our favorite two in the favorite whole. keyword. Yeah, I, I mean, I can't get over how good it is. It, this card is just solid. It's not great, and it's not my first option for overrunning. But when I'm down to like fifty cents, and like I'm like, what do I, I need? Something I, uh, I cash or uh, ibex, the thing that needs to attack. No, nah, no, nah, cost way too much. Uh, I mean, the only other one I can think of is Enrage Forerunners, Overwhelming Stampede, the this. These yeah, are like Earthshaker Giant. Is like three, four bucks. Not now, so. budget bomb. Not a budget easy. bomb. Just not a budget bomb. This is one of the go tos, I think. Especially good if you have two commanders, because it's much less likely that they're both just going to die out of nowhere. If you're getting board wiped, then this thing's dead anyway. So I think you can really take advantage of that static bonus. Yeah, uh, I'm, it's always annoying to me. Every card that cares about your commander being out makes partners better. Man, it's almost like partner was like really weird and maybe they shouldn't have done it. Poor, poor design. Yeah. Some, <laughs> not, the, some, not the best design. Some might have said that. Some might have said that, but not us. We would never say that. Uh, let's go to Soul of the Harvest. Six mana, six, six, trample. Whenever another creature enters, if it's a non token, you can draw a card. And Primordial Sage, six mana, four, five. Whenever you cast a creature spell, draw a card. 88 cents and 31 cents, respectively. Yeah. I mean, this is pretty simple. Uh, uh, the other versions of this card are just staying up. Uh, Guardian Project is super expensive. as has some reprint. And Beast Whisper is... Yeah, it's up there a it, little. It's up there a little. But it's, that one is pretty cheap. But we, again, we're, when we draw cards, we don't just look to have one or two draw spells in our whole deck. We want a ton. And obviously, in our 30, 40 creature deck, these are go-to on a budget. Mana dorks, uh, cost reducers. They play well with a lot of stuff. Elves. You just want to sling creatures over and over, replace your board. So even if you get board wiped, you don't care because you're just going to deploy a bunch of stuff all over again. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't feel bad to overextend on the battlefield if every time you play a card, you replace it in your hand. Yeah. We got Colorless slash Multicolored. This one, I think, is a new to budget bombs. It's Swift Foot Boots, two mana, acquired artifact equipment, equipped for one, quick creature has haste and hexproof. Both things we're kind of interested in. If your commander really wants to attack or tap with some kind of ability, it's got like seven power, and maybe you're Voltroning it up, then you're just all over this card. Yeah, Swift Boots is really good at obviously protecting your commander, giving haste. Like, we know what this card does well, and that's a lot, but um, the fact that it's under a dollar now really just, it separates it from Lightning Greaves, right? Because like, Lightning Greaves has like, you know, taken off and it's now it's worth enough money that it's like, all right, that's the expensive one. Swift Foot Boots is the cheap one. Even though we like Lightning Greaves more, you know, we're going to have to accept the boots because the boots are here. Six, seven cents is not a lot. Yeah, if you're beating down, if you've got some kind of Voltron commander or activated ability I like commander you don't want to wait for. I like caring about both. If you care about the haste and you care about the shroud, then usually I'm in. If the whole deck cares about haste, then it's also can be pretty good. Just those yeah. little things. Make sure you're, you're it's your deck, your deck enough and you're not just like, I my commander could use a little protection. I mean, every commander deck... Every commander would like be better if it had Hexproof, but that doesn't mean every commander deck wants this card. Yeah, I would agree with that completely. Yeah, we got one multicolor card in this whole list, and it's Win Grace's Judgment. And I was surprised to see that this thing just plummeted after the reprint. 40 cents. 
five mana, three for one. You destroy their best non-land permanent for each opponent. Yeah. Um, in a ca any casual game that isn't, like, competitive. Like, so any casual game. I was going to say any casual game that isn't competitive, which narrows which it down to implied. Uh, uh, every casual game. Uh, so every casual game, Wingrace's Judgment is just perfect. It is one of the best removal spells you can play. Uh, in, even in a, it's so good that if we go to five color, I consider still playing this card. Like this yeah. is five mana three for one is pretty sweet. It's still like on par, even if you're like Heliod's interventioning, which I think is a better card. That's a five mana three for one at five mana. I mean, it's it's a better card in some senses, but if you want to be able to answer all permanent types and have the versatility, this card overtakes it in that manner where you, yeah, Heliod's invention, amazing card, destroys a bunch of artifacts and enchantments, but putting any non land permanent onto it is just uh, something that makes it at least. Had fight against it. Like, I might play this card over how I didn't mention my five color deck. It's not a, a counter spell either, so it feels pretty good to, and safe to hold it up. You're always going to fire it off at the end of the turn. If they yep. play something great and you just feel even better about it, you go pff, 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 blow up your best stuff. Yeah, and it almost they almost never don't have something worth blowing up. Even if they're in the worst position, you still get to go, like, all right, kill your planeswalker, kill your enchantment, both that were killing me, and then kill your tutu bear because, haha, take right, that. Right, your Oracle of Moldiah. Yeah. Sorry that you're sorry that you're behind, but take that. Yeah, <laughs> cash, but it isn't bystander. Well, there's only uh, one card left, and it's actually five cards. It's actually a cycle of lands. The battle for Zendikar lands. They've been reprinting these like quite often, kind of all the time now. So it's Prairie Stream, twenty three cents. Sunken Hollow, forty six cents. Smoldering Marsh, seventy cents. Cinderglade at forty one cents, and Canopy Vista at forty eight cents. Yeah, uh, these have types, and if you can find, there's cards under a dollar. That care and search for uh, lands with types. If you have any of those, these are really, really good. They're also, besides um, being great for being fetched up, just pretty good by themselves. Your worst, your worst decks, your more budget decks, not necessarily worst decks, but your decks more, with lots of basics. Yeah, decks. Yeah, your de your less budget decks are going to have a higher concentration of basics because you can't fill out all your land slots with expensive lands. Yes, your more budget, less expensive decks will have more basics, and these will be even better. But in a deck with fetches, these are also still really good. I mean, I like Knight of the White Orchid cares about planes. Wood Elves cares about forests. Foil cares about islands. There's all these different synergies you can go find yeah. that make these worth being typed. Yeah, completely agree. And we do budget bombs, you know, once a month. So go check out last month's budget bombs and tell us what you think. Peace out, Tribe Scouts.